Craigslist. Craigslist. Hello, Craigslist. Craigslist! Yeah. Mm, man, your instruments, it's Craigslist. The place where all your teenage kids are going to look for people to play with and people to give money to and stuff like that. Craigslist, Phoenix, the musicians section. Let's see what people are asking about. Cover band looking for sound man oh. or woman. It does say or woman. They said that. I didn't throw That's that nice. in just because I knew you were going to say or gal. Hey, guys or gal. So they said sound man or woman. That's different. I haven't heard that before. Mm-hmm. Cover band looking for sound man or woman. Uh, da, da, da. We are a busy working cover band and need someone to run our PA during shows. We are looking for someone to become our sixth member, so to speak, our sound guy. We have our own gear and haul it ourselves. We just want someone to run it and maybe help us load, unload. Okay. Okay. You would get paid an even split of our nightly dough. Wow. Now, the end of this sentence will help us answer a couple questions we've heard before. How much do you make? We make anywhere from... 250 to 500 a night. Plus drinks or what? <laughs> You're going to be our sixth member, and the most we're going to make is 500 a night. So that's less than 100 bucks for probably yeah, at least four hours. It's like about 65 bucks or something like that. And remember, it's not for four hours. That's your day's worth of work. It doesn't matter if it's for an hour or four hours. It's it's your work that day. So you're getting $65 for that. Sure. You know, that, that gig. Uh as you, now, this is the one that's funny. As you make us sound better, the gigs will get better, and we'll make more together. Hmm. That's kind of weird logic. I don't care I, for that. I but, agree. Yeah, just, oh, well, we would hire you, but you're not really good enough. So okay, we'll get better, and because it's the sound guy. Yeah, we won't really be better, but the sound guy makes us better. Because we just needed the volume set right on the piano. That's that was right. The problem. We are well established and very good. We're so well established and very good, we're only making 250 to 500 a night. Mm-hmm. To be clear, you do not need to use your own equipment unless you want to. We have good stuff. I'm always wary of that. You also have to be willing to be with us at shows anywhere from three to seven or eight nights a month. Three to seven or eight nights. Oh, three to seven or eight nights a month. Yeah, I don't know why. You just pick one of those. Three to eight. (laughs) Why just say three to eight? We play all over the valley, so you must be willing to drive from east to west and north to south. Got to have reliable transportation. Anyone interested? Thanks for reading this. Thirty. So interesting. I went ahead and did the math up front on a calculator because I don't do this very good in my head. But I said, okay, let me give you $500 a night band and divide it by six. That's $83 and change mm-hmm. a night in the best case. The other best case was we worked three to eight per month. If you did eight in a month, that would that's come a out couple to a week, couple of shows a week. That's $666 and 67 dollars uh, cents per month. Okay, yeah, let's just take let's just say it's 700 on a good week, on a good month. Let's just say it's $660 a mm-hmm. month cuz it's for 8 gigs. So that means 8 days of your working you're going to earn $666. That sounds like a side job to Not me. Very good. It might be that's what I'm thinking. It might be the kind of thing where maybe like I'm an old guy and whatever and stuff like that. And and the they're not being dishonest about it. Mm-hmm. You know, they're not saying we're, they're kind of weird about the, you make us sound better. And we'll get better gigs and get paid more. I don't know about that. Bands aren't going to get paid more no matter what. They're just going to get paid. I suppose it's possible for a sound person to make a band sound worse. If the sound weren't set correctly or better, but I don't sure. think it's anybody's, uh, uh, that's what's making you not get paid more. Sure. The, the I agree. bar's only going to afford, no, a bar's paying 500 bucks. You've worked in a restaurant. They don't have 500 bucks laying around per night to mm-hmm. do anything with. They're sure. barely squeaking by making the payroll because all the teens are calling in sick and they're at the mall. What's the, uh, and I just don't know enough about how to do sound. Mm-hmm. What What's the job of the sound person? Sure. Well, it's essentially learning another instrument. 
it's just like playing the guitar or the piano or something. You're now playing this audio board with all of the controls and things on it. And you got to know what's going on in the song, dissect the song and all that business and, and know when this volume has to be here and uh, know how to balance the, put the bass in this spot on the stage. You can pan all the instruments left and right on the stage mm-hmm. and make them different volumes. And who So is it like it's a mixing board yeah. thingy? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and the mics, and you got to put the mics in the right spot, and a mic on a drum set. Typically, there's a dozen microphones on a drum set all over the place, and they're picking up every drum head, top and bottom, and all that kind of stuff. And so there's a lot of stuff to it. It's not just to turn it up till it sounds good, like you and I see at the open mic. Sure. You know, we remember that open mic. Yeah. We, the guy he he starts fiddling with the knobs, and then he go, looks in the audience. He goes, "Hey, Dave, is that loud enough?" That's the sound guy. Right. <laughs> so, and so how would someone bad. know all of that stuff? You could go to school and become a audio engineer. Oh, okay. Get I see. a degree in audio engineering. You could go down here to the recording industry, uh, Academy of Recording Arts and Sciences, A-R-A-S. I think that's what it's called. Mm-hmm. They have two campuses right here in suburban Phoenix. One of them, guess where, in Chandler. <laughs> and, nice, uh, right next to the Chandler they, Center uh, for the Arts. Yeah, next to the Chandler Center for the wayward kids that want to be rock stars. You can go there and learn uh, how to uh, be an audio engineer. And it's a really good program. And uh, I have met several of the kids. I went down there and recorded some stuff for them. Mm-hmm. I, I played and mm-hmm. they, they were as their uh, like final exam. You know, they oh, would record cool. the thing and then make a tape and gave me the tape and all that kind of stuff. So really good stuff. They got good equipment and they're taught by people who are uh, retired from the industry and stuff like that. So it's like a trade school exactly. and maybe get like a or an associates or a mm-hmm. certification or degree from a trade school. Yeah. Right. And That's then so. if somebody did that, I'm just kind of expanding off of this mm-hmm. ad or whatever, yeah. what, like, so say your kid wants to do that and they go do that, right. then what? Um, Besides answering this Craigslist ad, what sure. else do you think they well, could do? Well, you go intern is what oh. uh, most of these will set you up for. And uh, you could do that also at Berkeley. You can also major in uh, audio engineering, oh. I think, at Berkeley. And most cool. schools in the uh, music department, you can nowadays majoring in the audio part of things. And you then, like anything else, you intern or whatever, and you uh, you know you make coffee and <laughs> clean. You're, you're sometimes known as the tape op. It used to be. That was the person who would operate the tape stuff mm-hmm. it was the gopher and he'd make coffee and clean the windows and and make sure that the reels of tape were there in the right place and stuff like that so that the guys who were doing all the work could do all the creative work and he was kind of doing the grunt work but so yeah it, it's a regular old learned position that you got to be good at it's not like i always say uh, handsome husband chris and i we're just idiots when we push the buttons we don't know what we're doing we're, we're sure. doing like that guy at the open mic we're going to turn it up a little bit is that enough sure <laughs> so there a, must be some sort of like standard or some sure. sort of curriculum like hey you know your bass should be like here Absolutely. as opposed to your drums or da 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 okay it's, okay interesting it's, uh, audio, it's a theory obviously to it engineering mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. Interesting. So, uh, my audio engineer student or, i mean my uh, uh phd engineering student is uh, uh electrical engineering is mm-hmm. his field and uh, that's his thing, is mm-hmm. audio, the human voice. Mm-hmm. He has a PhD in how the sounds are made with the human voice. Oh, wow. And that's that in right electrical alley. engineering. And I have a master's in that. So mm-hmm. we're we're always talking weird engineering kind of scientific the Stuff business. that no one else would Mine's understand. Mine's more scientific and his is more engineering. So it's really mm-hmm. neat to hear the two of them kind of come together. Mm-hmm. And then we throw in the mumbo jumbo about music and creativity and all that. That's it gets pretty weird. We're going to need some of that coffee, I think. Right. Okay. And then one more thing about this ad. Sure. What I thought was interesting now that you told me all that, mm-hmm. like, you know, they didn't say, and you must have the qualifications of X, Y, Z. You're right. Um, um, which I'm not sure if that's like good or bad. It sounds like they just, they need a, a musician type person that wants to help them basically. Just a guy that knows how to run this. You're right. Yeah, they don't really have, may have to help us unload and unload. Uh, unload and unload. Both. Right. <laughs> Load and unload. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah. And and maybe there isn't quite so much that you would say to an audio guy in this kind of setting. 
there would be in a bigger professional setting. You could be a front of house guy. Mm -hmm. You could be a monitors guy. The difference would be when you uh, are in the audience at a concert, you are hearing sound mixed by one guy. And that is all the sound that's coming through those millions of speakers that are next to you two on stage. Mm -hmm. You know, they're five stories high and everything. And there's you could see you could actually see the speakers sometimes. And you think there's thousands of them. And And they're pointed towards the audience all over the Mm -hmm. place. Yeah, they're suspended from the roof and all kinds of junk. Well, that's one guy mixing that on one bunch of big mixing boards. And then there's a completely separate system of a guy working the monitors. And he is he could be downstage up front. Uh, uh, and he could be backstage and he might also be in the back of the house, but he's completely different mixing board. He's mixing only the sound that goes to the artists on stage so that you, the singer can say, can I have a little more me in the monitor? That's the most (laughs) common thing they ever hear. I heard John Jett say that. He wants to mix it so that if you're the bass player and you need to hear more kick drum, he can do that. Mm-hmm. And if you're the guitarist, you need to hear more bass, you can do that. And it's not the same mix that's going out to the audience. They mm-hmm. want to hear something a little bit different. Sure. Plus the audience. Uh, the audience have, wants to hear the recorded version. Yeah. <laughs> and the audience always has the the huge factor of the uh, acoustics of the venue. Sure. That, Gosh, and, I bet that's hard to. Actually, that's a separate position now. And that's something that I do for the vocalists is I go in and I show up at the venue earlier than the place gets filled up and I walk around the place and I sing tones into the walls and into the curtains and the stages and stuff. And I find out where the hot spots are and the wolf tones. They call them the spots in the building that resonate. You start singing and you go, Ooh, and the building goes, right. So you go, okay, you take note of that frequency. And then when the audio guys set up the system, you tell them, there's a wolf tone at 800 hertz, and so they they bring down the response of 800 hertz a little bit. What's, wait, what exactly is a wolf tone? A, a wolf tone is, is that a, good or bad? Bad. Oh, okay. It's something physically that vibrates in response to the the tone that's sure. being produced by the singer or the instrument or whatever. So some of that guitar might have a wolf tone if it's got a loose something. A mm-hmm. peg or something that's loose, and you play a note, and it goes, brrr, makes it whatever, wolfy. Makes it kind of wolfy. Why is it called wolf? I don't know. <laughs> whatever, that's a wolf tone. Mm. So the, it's a it's a very legit position. It's not just a guy that, yeah, I'll just have you come around, and since you don't really play very well, you could twiddle the knobs on the thing. Right. Yeah, get your nips involved. <laughs> it could be as, as simple as that. It could be a guy doing that. You know, I mean. Getting his nips involved? He, yeah. Oh. And then as he got better <laughs> nips, they'd get more pay. So, oh, okay. hilarious. Well, so interestingly enough, there's, what was that now? A band looking for a sound guy. What do you think showed up the very next guy? Drum tech, stagehand, PA guy available. Oh. Hi. I'm a retired, as in I don't play anymore, not old, very experienced drummer slash sound man. Etc. Mm. I know every aspect of the stage. I'm looking to make a few extra bucks. That's important there. I'm not looking to be the next right. something. I have a, some sort of retirement. Make a few income. extra bucks by helping out your band in any capacity needed. Mm. It sounds like it fits with these last guys. Right. Miss matchy, Broker. Matchy. You better yes. go get them hooked up. <laughs> I'll help you hump and set up your gear and help in any way needed. I have a very intimate knowledge of drum setups, if that helps. I've always played large, complicated kits so I can handle pretty much anything. Not looking to get rich here, just make a few bucks. Enjoy some music and get out of the house. I have a car, so there's no problem there. Look at these. He's answering all those stupid true. I know, really? I'm a nice guy, and I do not smoke, drink, or drug. I don't care if you do. I've seen it all. <laughs> Interesting. I'm kind of interested. Who is this person? Let me know if you need my well, services. Who is this, like Alice Thanks. Cooper or something? 30. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he's, he answers all of my typical things. He says what he can do for me. Mm-hmm. He's not a dreamer. He, If we didn't think about the first ad, we could also file this under the category of He's telling us about something that we need that we may not have even realized we needed. Sure. 
A.J. O'Neill needs this guy, mm-hmm. but she doesn't know it. You know, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Every band needs this guy. In fact, they need this guy. I don't care what you do. If you can smoke and drink it all you want. I don't, but whatever. You can do what I've you seen want. It all, right. Okay, no drama. Mature, there. definitely. Mm-hmm. Totally right. mature. I'll be there if you want me to do this, I'll do that. If you want me to help the drums, I'll do that. It's just, if Even if you don't, don't this, keep so. this guy on, use him for a little bit. He probably he definitely has something to offer. You just learn some stuff. Get yeah. Coffee. Yeah. Clean the windows. A little blueberry mm-hmm. essence over here. How's your nips? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> totally radical. So that's just weird that they just ran in on the same. I think they were right there close to each other on the same thing. So uh, we may not be able to broker them. They might have might have caught it. Said, hey, yeah, I'll try you. Okay. We don't need your broker. Don't need them sometimes. Here's the next one. Keys synth player needed. Hmm. Indie, pop rock, hip hop type of band. Looking for some dope dedicated band members to back me up on some tracks that manifested themselves over an estranged period of time. Oh, that sounds so attractive. Wow, man. (laughs) Now, I had to figure out from context that he said looking for some dope dedicated. I thought he meant like dedicated to dope, some other dopers. Right. But apparently that means like Cool. Really, yeah, dope really means dedicated. like totally awesome. Like you can't say totally awesome anymore. Yeah, you got to say dope. Yeah, so it's Ugh. dope dedicated. All right. <sighs> Specifically, a keys synth player. If you feel like you can contribute in other ways, feel free to contact me. If you're a multi-talented instrumentalist, including odd one out type instruments, that'd be dope. Extra bonus points of you can swap from keys to rhythm guitar. For now, it's my producer and I'm making the music, but it turns out sick. Who knows? I didn't make a mistake there. It might turn into a full on collab project. Period. My goodness. That so, was all one thing. Okay, yeah. <laughs> just to be clear, you were just going on and on and on because he's going on and on. And, and where on. it sounded like I stumbled, that was, I got it right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I read what. <laughs> right. <laughs> Did he actually say be dope? B-E, another word, dope. That would be dope. Yeah, that'd be dope. That'd be dope. Yeah, T-H-A-T apostrophe D, oh, that'd gosh. be dope. I'm not okay with this. Yeah, that'd be dope. Yeah. So uh, when I distill all that, it comes down to it's my producer and I making the music. For now, it's my producer and I making the music. Hmm. I'm not really sure what that. Yeah, what is that? Producer means relationship. I don't. Yeah, but I, I don't understand. But I need you that. if you play keys and synthesizers. And what it doesn't really say what this person plays. Oh, uh, vocals. Mm. Back me. He said back me on some. On some tracks that manifested themselves over an estranged period of time. What is the content of these tracks, sir? I'm betting you're absolutely right. It's it sounds to me like a, another goofball that's in you know <laughs> journal mode, and he's had this emotional experience, and he thinks, oh, I I can just do lyrics just flow from my chi, man. Wow. <laughs> from my nips. From my nips. The lyrics Thanks just flow. flow in this. It's 175 milligrams of lyrics. I can write three <laughs> verses sometimes. All right. I'm not aiming to create a specific sound. More or less, our sound would be a mesh of different genres. Here's a track I've <sighs> produced. Here's a track I've produced? Yeah. And there's. It, are you going to play it? There's a sound club. Um, no? it, it's too far f- it, difficult for me to copy it over to the <laughs> thing and everything. So, <laughs> to the thing and everything. Whatever. But, <laughs> to the thing and everything. But the deal at the end, here's what I like. Keep in mind everything he said, right? Mm -hmm. For now, it's me and the producer. I'm not not aiming to create a specific, it'd be a mesh of different genres. This is over in a strange period of time. The goal is to become the next biggest band to come out of Phoenix. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Well, God bless him. He's got a goal. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't know. It sounds very. Um, I would like to. I know. don't even want to say misguided. Well, he just—it's not guided. There, there's not enough foundation going on there. Who was the last biggest band that came out of Phoenix? Um, was it Roger 
what are those guys? Peace, the Peacemakers and the Jim yeah. Blossoms, I suppose. Yeah, there's only two, isn't there? And that was like 25 years ago. I mean, we, we can't really say that Alex Alice Cooper came out of Phoenix. I mean, I mean, he lives here now and stuff. But, Stevie Nicks is from Phoenix, you know. But she didn't really come. I mean, she didn't really like sing the yeah, bars they, in Phoenix, the tap room right, and everything. You know? Exactly. <laughs> you know, Fleetwood Mac didn't come out of Phoenix. Yeah, they went to L.A. And right. Did thing sure. And, and, and then the last thing the guy says on here, I'm 23, by the way. That's it? Yeah. Well, he does list. Oh, here, right down at the bottom, he lists uh, musical influences. Kid Cootie. 21 Pilots, Green Day, Halsey, Kendrick Lamar, Metallica, some word with a B and a weird character that it's not a letter or number, NS, The Front not Bottoms, familiar. Arctic Monkeys, and Gucci Mane. I've heard of some of those, but Metallica in in the mix with all of that? Yep. Oh, boy. Metallica and The Front Bottoms. <laughs> As opposed to the back tops. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, well, like I said, it's just it doesn't even sound misguided. It sounds like there is no there's no good beginning. Well, if you were any kind of uh, keys synth player and you read this, because he says the first thing he says keys synth player needed. Okay, I'm a keys synth player. Sure, I mean I'm cruising through the ads. Now I read this ad. Would you have any idea what he wants you to do? No, absolutely not. I don't. I mean, you can go down here and you can go, okay, K- Kid Cootie, whoever that is. Is there a Kid Cootie? It must be the name of a band, I'm guessing. Never heard of him. I've heard of a few of those, but. Hmm. Well, I'm going to I'm gonna put him in the dreamer category. Yeah, the I think so. The next big band out of, the next big band out of Phoenix. Out of Phoenix. Why wouldn't they, if you're going to be big, why don't you go to some place where bands come out of? Right. That's right. You know, you could be the next big band out of Des Moines if you wanted, <laughs> but it's not like it would really set the world on fire. Hey, ooh, they came out of Des Moines. Although one time I remember at, at Fiddler's Dream, they had a uh, the little upcoming events thing. They said, uh, you know, we were there on Thursday night at open uh, open stage, whatever they call it. They said, this Saturday night, uh, uh, Dave and Susie, folk singers from Culver City, California. <laughs> Not sure that's a real draw. Yeah. They build airplanes in Culver City. I know, you know as opposed like to the, Dave and Susie from, you know, You could have even, Nebraska. if that was the point, why don't you just say they're from L.A.? Right. Because then people might go, oh, maybe they're like, you know. Right. Whatever. Why would you say Culver City? Culver City. Right. Ooh, the, the folk music capital of the world. All right. Well, here you go. Next one. Keyboardist looking for Amy Winehouse singer. Mm, okay. And he lives, in, he lives in which suburb of Phoenix? Chandler. That's right. My <laughs> name is Usher. Okay. Right. Re- it's been taken. Yeah. You know, sorry. Sorry. That's been taken. My name is Usher, and I'm a keyboard player. I'm looking for a singer that enjoys singing her songs, Amy's songs. Mm-hmm. Right. If you're not serious, please don't waste my time. Now, this is important because of what's going to happen in a minute here. <laughs> if you're not serious, please don't waste my time. I'm looking for someone who is passionate, singing her songs. No email. You can text or call me to chat in general about music. Or if you're interested in making your own songs, I'm all for it. It seems like there's a lot of rules already. I just, I don't know what to do. (laughs) See, first it was, don't waste my time if you're not serious about singing like Amy Winehouse. But then in the very next sentence, it was like, well, if you want to chat in general about music, just text or call me. I'm I'm, I'm okay to waste my time doing that with you. If you're interested in making your own songs. I'm all for that, too. So, really, the whole business about don't waste my time is like, please waste my time. like completely Mm wishy-washy, which isn't. uh, Sure. Thanks for reading. Uh, Now, (laughs) I went to his SoundCloud. He listed a thing on there. Mm -hmm. And and what he's got, first of all, he's a guy named Usher, and he's a keyboard player. Describe for me what this guy looks like to you so far, knowing what you know about this. I I would think he was young. Mm -hmm. Male? Guy? He's male. He's young, meaning... Under 30, possibly under 25. Right. Um, I, white guy, black guy, Mexican guy, Asian guy? I would say not white. 
Not a white guy. Because white guys usually aren't named Usher. You, you don't. You that could be a nickname he named himself. So we don't know. But well, and plus, we think about Usher, right? The, the person He's that already guy. exists yeah. that is an African American. Yeah. So I don't know if he's from Africa or not. But... Okay, so I'm cold in here. You are. Yes. Oh, maybe that's okay. That caffeine is bunking you. <laughs> what Taking up, your... sucking out all the heat. It's your nips. <laughs> They're like little radiators for the heat. All right. So anyway, I, I went to the guy's SoundCloud, and I won't go there because it's he's uh, it's the uh, it's the journey tune separate ways. Okay. And he's got a chick singing it, and she's not bad, but the guy is he looks kind of like Kim Jong, the North Korean guy. Okay. He's like a little uh, chubby Asian. Something Korean, Vietnamese, Chinese, I don't know what. But he's a funny looking little, cute little guy. He doesn't look like a guy that I'm thinking, my name is Usher. Mm. You know, I wanted like a big suave, cool guy. You know, like a black guy that's got like an accent and a voice and a mm-hmm. hat and all that stuff. Suave. And he's just a sure. little fat guy. <laughs> yes. He was like overweight. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, let me ask you this. Was there, okay, so there was a visual, it was a video, not just audio. Uh, well, there was a still shot. Oh, on okay. On the SoundCloud, they have, you can put your picture up there, you okay. know, of course, of your band or your skull and crossbones or you or whatever you want, so. But no, no pictures of your nips. No, no nips. So not triple X SoundCloud. I don't know if we can do that, so. <laughs> So don't waste sorry, his time. Sorry, we're going to get so much mileage out of nips tonight. I'm so sorry. So, yeah. It's okay. That's a good uh, good, good mileage to get. Now that I learned we can say nips on the radio. <laughs> we'll do that well. well, and here you go. If if all of this business about drama and and reliable transportation and knowing how to actually play your instrument and all that nonsense does not appeal to you, here's an alternative. I can't wait. Twitter followers, YouTube views, and Facebook likes. 20,000 Twitter followers, $59.95. 1,500 Facebook likes, $34.95. 10,000 YouTube views, $24.95. Mm. 1,000 YouTubes, $24.95. 5,000 Reverb Nation or SoundCloud, $24.95. They list several of them. Vivo, Vine, Spotify, Instagram, Blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. No administ- uh no admin access required. I'm I, that's some hacking thing, I guess. Sure. Serious replies only. Just need your link. Fast, safe, and discreet. PayPal only accepted. Any questions? Ask thirty. Okay, so whoa, and I'm just, totally confused. Just buy yourself into famousness. Okay, so so this person is obviously, I guess, some people. Are, regarding social media, mm-hmm. the number of views or likes, mm-hmm. uh, I guess in traditional terms, I guess you'd kind of call that circulation. It, it's it's good to increase your circulation. And in social media, we do that by views and likes. And this guy or gal is saying that for these nominal fees, yep. that you, I will get you, will you have that? Those. Yep. But what does that mean? How will he do that? It doesn't say how he does that. And it's fast and safe and discreet. Would he just Sir sit there in front of his only. computer? And he's like, like, no, I don't know. He like, hacks it or whatever like, he does it. Like, I don't think he does it one at a time. He probably hacks really? it. Really? Yeah. No. Or he probably gets you to send the money and then he doesn't do it. And then what are you going to do? <laughs> exactly. Because you're a 15 year old kid and you're exactly. saying, okay, I'll come up with But it. mom, I only spent 25 bucks. Mm-hmm. But he like, said, yeah. and it was on Craigslist. Right. It's a scam. It doesn't matter if it's 25 bucks or 2500 bucks. It was a yeah. scam, and you were the sucker. And if it wasn't a scam, then it would be just a dishonest thing. You say, hey, uh, yeah, I'm pretty popular. I got 10,000 YouTube views. Right. <laughs> wow. <gasps> I didn't think about that. Well, you, yeah. guys, you guys <laughs> must be good. You got, uh, you got uh, 5,000 Reverb Nation plays. Wow. You got uh, 10,000 Vine followers. Wow. <laughs> See? Interesting. So you don't even have to have to mess with all that. You can just buy your way don't into likes and views. Just buy the stuff. Mm. It's you don't much, even have to be good. It's cheaper than hiring me to come play guitar for you. Mm. There you go. That's all I know. It wars, wears me out. Wars me out. It wars you. Speaking of wars. Yes. I noticed that today on the History Channel... And I was watching one that was several years old. 
they were allowed to say whores. Isn't it like she's a whore? Yeah. Huh. They were talking about the. Uh, uh, they were talking about Old West brothel tech, and and the the, the how brothels worked in the Old West. <laughs> Is it that technical? Yeah, well, they had different <laughs> levels. Something of we actually need to review. They had prostitutes in a in a whorehouse, and they could say whores, and they would say whores. You know, the men came in on the railroad, and then the whores came, and stuff like that. Really? But I just didn't think you could say the word whores. I on, didn't either. On broadcast television, like that. And, and but this episode was a couple of years old. Yeah. Hmm. They must have updated that. It was old the, enough uh, that David Carradine was still alive because he ooh. was the host. Oh my! It was the, uh, um, which, what's the uh, commission that government, uh, federal trade commission? The no, FCC. FCC. Communications commission. The people who have licensed FCC. me to broadcast on the air. Somebody, you know, lobbied hard. Hey, we need to. We need to allow people to say whore. When you do allow people to say whore, it'll be good for the something. Yeah, it'll yeah, be good for something. So. We need to just move into, you know, the 80s or whatever. It's okay with me. I think you could say anything you want on TV, and then if you don't want to watch it, you don't need to watch it. I don't even watch TV, so if it comes through on YouTube, I'll see it. Right. Otherwise, it's just a bunch of whores with nips. <laughs> Let's take a break. You got it. <laughs> 